the guy. I don't recognize. I don't know if they just opened, so I'll have to check it out. I um, don't come out that often and walk all around unless I absolutely have to for work or what have you. Um, uh, so we are on a mission to avoid <laughs> all kinds of activity out here. Some of it's regular street riffraff. Other activity involves overly timed, overly coincidental, orchestrated activity. It is done. Um, no one knows what to do about it, so it's kind of ignored by, <laughs> by authorities for now and law firms and stuff like that. Although people have uh, worked, particularly in Michigan, to figure out how to create laws around gang stalking. Um, it is an actual phenomenon. Um, Either it's happening to you and you're not awakened enough to know it, but you're kind of miserable because things don't work out for you or you're annoyed a lot by people, or you're fully awakened and you got slammed. <laughs> you would know. For the most part, you would know if you were a target of a major gang stalking effort. Why it occurs. I don't know what to say. <laughs> so that's still the, the jury, the verdict is still out. Um, but some people see the world as, and this is basically true on some level, I don't know how someone gets selected for gang stalking, but um, basically the world is comprised of families who've been running the universe for a long time. And those families have people all up and down the socioeconomic level. So even someone sort of lower who doesn't make a lot of money, they know they're pretty secure, they can get like a job still because their family still runs the universe. Then there's the rest of a fest of us for the rest of us. And we're like, I don't really know anyone. <laughs> I have like three followers on YouTube. <laughs> so therein lies the difference. It's still a fact today. Am I going this way? Um, so those families will always reign supreme. It's just, we live in a modern world and people don't wanna believe that. You know, we think that there's job opportunities, things are created for all kinds of people. Um, but those entities will do whatever possible to make sure their families stay in the moneyed positions. So, and there are families from all countries, all walks of life, and they want to make sure their people stay at the top. So that's how some people perceive it. I think there's some truth to that because if you're a regular person from an average, you know, family or whatever, and you know, if you try to find certain types of jobs or try to make it in certain worlds, particularly, say, the movie industry. Um, we'll just go with that. Um, you know, it's incredibly difficult unless you have ties and connections to people who've been running that show for eons. You know, there are families and people have learned, say, like, you know, if you can tame a bear or a lion, you are valuable in certain worlds and you're probably part of a very specific type of family. Most of us wouldn't you know, press our life, you know, we wouldn't go near a lion, tiger, or bear. We have no idea how to control those things. But some people actually do. It's like the dog whisperer. Um, most of us are, can, we can try as we might, you know, to be as good as the dog whisperer. We just won't be. He is actually someone who knows how to tame wild animals. I'm so not kidding. Which way am I going? Um, so, Technically, Caesar Milan would be from a family that has sort of run the show in certain worlds and areas, if you will. <laughs> so he is from a larger family because he wouldn't be able to do what he does if he were 
just some regular Joe Schmo trying to make it in little tiny suburbia, you know? <laughs> you know what I mean? He thinks he's riding to riches. There's something else going on there, so not many people can do what he does, which is why he wound up with a show and no one else really has, right? So, there's a guy on YouTube and he does a lot of shorts and he shows that he handles bears, um, what else? He might do tiger, or not tigers, but lions. What does he do? He does a bunch of wild animals. Extremely rare person to be able to comfortably interact with wild animals. Even if they've been born in captivity and domesticated on some level, they still, you know, those animals are still considered wild. And anyway, sort of got off topic, but here we are on a Friday night uh, and I'm heading on down to run another errand. I got my Tylenol at CVS. Um, it wound up, it was originally $7.49 plus tax, but I got 40% off plus another dollar. It was 40% off uh, the total order or total purchase in addition to a dollar off coupon of pain relievers, which it fit into the category of. So I wound up paying with tax like 380, is that right? Right, 40 would be half, so that would be 350. Anyway, it shows on the, it shows 40 plus a dollar. Let me think about that, that's right. 40% off, 50 would be 350, so 40 would be in the $4 range, and then plus a dollar. So I paid 389 in the end. So I'm thankful for that because sadly, you know, I do get headaches often enough and better to just sort of take those and be able to go to sleep um, and admittedly I'm experiencing a certain time period of avoiding the activity that started up in 2011 as much as possible it's a lot quieter because the pandemic thinned out the population and other people are in play hopefully helping <laughs> so and one of the goals is stay inside and also if our brains could be tapped or if brain waves are interacting with the world of data or what have you um, wouldn't it be better to not be thinking too much I I think a lot you know I a very complex you know I some people prefer to be or they just are more uh, I don't want this to sound like an insult they just have a simpler mindset and some people are you know, more complex, if you will. Um, because I pursued writing and English at, you know, the University of Delaware and the New School, this involves a specific type of brain that's, uh, that's very active. Um, because of research, gathering information, blah, blah, blah. Other people think in a different way, operate in a different way. 